Well, greetings once again to my shop. Today I'm going to turn a small hollow form out of this really nice piece of myrtle burl. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome everybody. This is Brent English, president of Robust Tools, and today I'm here in Sam Angelo's really well equipped shop. And Sam's one of our favorite dealers, and he's going to do yet another YouTube video for you. So please enjoy. All right, now in the opening clips, I'm going to show you how I check this up. I've got uh, a hole here right in the center of my, my blank, and I'm going to put that on a screw chuck. I'm going to level off the bottom of this and I'm going to put a, a waste block, a glue block on this that's attached to a face plate. I don't want to waste any of this wood down here on the bottom of my, my blank by uh, putting a tenon on there that I might take off later on. So uh, watch as I true this up and make it round and we'll get ready to, to make this into a really cool uh, hollow form. Alright, now if I can attach a piece of wood to my lathe with a screw chuck, I'm going to do that. It's uh, very efficient, it's safe, and it's uh, rather quick. I've got my, my screw packed out with uh, a plastic washer. I don't need all those threads. I probably don't need those threads for that matter. So. If you do this, be really careful and just let the lathe wind this on there. Okay, now I've got the speed up to about 1500 RPM. Now I'm going to try to take you through the steps of uh, making this hollow form. One thing I need to do here on the very bottom is establish a point where I can rechuck this. Um, my live center right here is not set very deep. I've just got a maybe a couple millimeters, if that, poking through the level of this uh, uh, cup chuck. So I've got a hole on there, I can uh, remount that later on. So now the next step is going to be to take off the corners of this. Alright, so I've got my blank mounted on my, my screw chuck and I've changed my plans a little bit. What I'm going to do, I've got a line drawn on here and I'm going to simply take this piece of wood on my bandsaw and knock off these corners. That'll be a little bit easier than trying to turn those away. Burl wood is a little bit convoluted. It's uh, interlocking, it's going in a lot of different directions and uh, it's not exactly like turning <clears throat> cross grain or end grain wood. Okay, you are looking at the bottom of my hollow form. This will be the base and I've drawn some pencil marks on there to highlight the high and low points on the surface of the bottom of this. I've got a uh, really, this is 60 grit sandpaper. Where it's a little bit lighter, that's the high point and this area right in here is a little bit lower so I can determine how flat that surface is with this uh, sandpaper and sanding block. And then I will attach my my waste block onto that right there. 
All right, now I'm ready to glue my, my waste block on here. So I'm gonna put some tight bond two wood glue on my waste block. Spread that around. And I like to let that set even for 45 seconds or a minute. Let that soak into the wood. Otherwise, if you put a lot of pressure on that to begin with, you get a, a glue joint that's starved for glue. So I've got a, a cone center on this. Ordinarily, I don't like these, but on my, my waste block, I've got a hole for a screw chuck. And what I'm going to do as an added a bit of security is I'm going to turn a tenon or a spigot on the end of my waste block right here. In case that uh, screw chuck fails, I have a backup. We'll bring up the tail center, give that another spin. A little bit of pressure on that and just wait. Nice and lined up, I like that. All right, now it's been about a half an hour since I glued this uh, waste block on there. I've got a long tenon for my long nose jaws, and I've cleaned up this surface. I've just uh, rounded that outer surface over, and I'm going to just uh, take a look and see what this burl looks like. It's going to be really, really pretty. Now, this particular piece of wood has some some natural voids in there. I think those are the the burl eyes. And I'm tempted to just leave those natural rather than try to fill them. So I'm going to reverse this. We'll do a little shaping on this uh, myrtle burl hollow form. All right, it's time to reverse chuck my, my hollow form blank. Take my screw chuck off the spindle. I'm going to replace it with a scroll chuck. It's got long nose jaws. Now I've got a really long tenon on that because I've got a you know a very deep jaw set on this and go way back in there. Now I'm taking this cone center out because I just uh, don't normally use them. I was using that to, to line my blank up. I'm going to go back to a cup center. And I'm just going to put a little pressure on this to make sure my tenon is seated properly. I can really torque this down. My waste block is a piece of maple. Let's see if that's uh, running, running true. Very nice. And I'll probably do a little bit of the shaping with the tail center support in place. All right, now as I do a little shaping on this, I'm going to give you different camera angles. This is the top of my vessel. And... We'll just see what takes shape here. Get my face shield on. Now I've cranked the speed up to about 1400 RPM.
All right. Didn't take long to kind of shape the top of that. I like the profile. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is drill a depth hole. This will help uh, remind me how deep to go. Got a piece of tape here. Right there, and I'm just going to take the live center out, and this particular drill has a Morse taper. They're very handy. And I'm going to turn my lathe speed down quite a bit. All right, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of squealing like a pig on this uh, drill bit here. So I'm going to take some WD-40 spray in there. Uh, yeah, that's nasty. Ah. Go down to my tape. All right, now I left quite a bit of thickness down at the bottom of this. I can always take more of that wood off later on. I'm going to just check my my depth here and just see how I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I like it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the top of this. If I'm going to uh, put an insert in there and thread it, I've got a lot of real real cool natural voids in there and I'm really tempted to maybe put an oil finish on this and just kind of let it uh, let it be like that so I think that'll be kind of cool anyway moving right along I'll readjust my camera I'm going to do just a little bit more profiling on the bottom of this piece now I was getting ready to hollow this out I needed to do some more shaping on the outside. And I started looking at the shape right now. I want to show you something. And I think I'm going to change directions a little bit. So if you look at this vessel, that reminds me of pottery, just the shape. So if I leave this shape like this and add a little black wood plug on the top well you know it's it's different it's different than just a normal hollow form that you know we take this down to a narrow base anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna forge ahead with that plan can always change courses and that's an option that we all have make sure i'm running true here so i am going to leave it like this at least for the time being do a little bit of hollowing on the inside here and we'll see where we're at now i'm going to just take a straight tool a straight hollowing tool and just start hogging out some of the inside of this vessel Got to be careful taking that tool out of my spinning uh, jug. <laughs> I'm changing this from a pot to a jug. I'm, I'm committed. I like this shape. I think, I think it's a little bit different. So I've got this hollowed down to about right here. I think that's a pretty good thickness. I'm using a bent tool, a bent hollowing tool with a carbide cutter on it. And I need to get going. The difficult part is going to be 
down here at the bottom. I need to have that fairly square across the bottom. Starting to get some, some uh, areas where those burl eyes are, are opening up, which, you know, if it doesn't get any worse, it'll be okay. I've got uh, mineral oil on the outside of this to kind of help, uh, help it from drying out. Anyway, let's move on. I'm not going to show you a lot of this hollowing because you can't see it anyway. All right, now I'm going to take a little detour. And one of the things you have to do here is measure the wall thickness of your vessel, of your hollow form. And here's a, a little tiny uh, measuring device. This is just out of a piece of wire. And I've got a number of different... Uh, sizes here that'll get you really deep into a 12 inch vessel and in a second I'm going to show you how I would make one of these most of these don't really fit into this it's very easy to make one here's an here's another size so basically what this uh, is made up of is a straight leg and then kind of a circular area right there. So let me take you over on my uh, machinist vise. And I'm going to just take this uh, piece of wire right here. And I'm going to make one of these very quickly. It's very easy to do. Okay, I've got my piece of wire clamped in my vise here. And I'm going to put about uh, maybe a half an inch into the vise. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a hammer. Bend that over. Okay. Try to get that in a, a spot where you can see it. Just a little bit of a leg, if you will, a dog leg. Now the other end of that, you can also have a little uh, bend on that. It doesn't matter, in my opinion. So from... From here to about here, I'm going to have that straight, okay, right, right in this area, right in here. So I'm going to just put this on my, my vise. So there's a, there's a square, so there's a straight leg right there. This does not have to be perfect. So from... This area right here, right there, this is straight, and all the way around here is going to be round. All right. All right, now just uh, I so happen to have a, this is actually from my dust collection system. It's a little, little end cap, and I think that would be a good, a good radius for that. So. Let me see if I can figure out a way to do this. Okay, so I was able to, to clamp this into my, my vise. So, from here to here is straight, and the rest of this, I'm going to bend a radius in this. And, you know, it doesn't matter. You can almost do this by hand. Not all that critical. Right there. Now, I'm going to take this. What I want at this point is for this point and this point to meet. And I'm going to just do this by hand. Now you can get this wire at your local hardware store. Let me, let me find a good place for this on my shirt. That's it. That's as long as it took me to do that. You know, about two minutes. And you can always adjust this as you're going along, depending on how thick your wall is on your vessel. Very good. Okay, I just, I just noticed my spool of wire. This uh, started out a lot bigger, but, you know, this is probably an eighth of an inch. I got some thicker stuff that's, uh, I think, three sixteenths of an inch. Anyway, I've got my opening set at a half an inch right there. Now... You can see right here on the opening that this is really narrow. 
And if you can see the difference, so that's kind of what you're going for. And I can stick this in here and go down. And right there, I'm touching. So I'm pretty good from the opening down to about here. And all the way down, I need to narrow that wall thickness. And we'll be good. Yeah, I think that's going to be a kind of a cool project. A little bit different. So let me do a little bit more hollowing off camera and I'll get back to you. All right, let's do a little recap here. I have my hollow form completely hollowed out. And I'm ready to think about a finish. This is my final shape right here. And it'll look a little different when it's uh, vertical. So I'm going to put uh, a good layer of lacquer on the outside of this. I don't want to make it any darker. I have not sealed this with shellac. I just put a nice, uh, nice thick layer of, of lacquer. And this is just lacquer that I, I buy from a hardware store. It's, uh, I think it's labeled brushing lacquer. Thin it down a little bit. A little bit inside the rim there. This piece of wood is uh, uh, spectacular. <laughs> I don't often use that word, but boy, this is really amazing. So I'm going to just wipe this off, give it a second to soak in. I'll let this dry completely, and then I'll put another coat on it. And two more steps I need to accomplish. I need to part this off and I'm going to part this off which I don't ordinarily do. And the other step is I'm going to make a plug right here. And I'm going to do some research and see what uh, this might have looked like in the 19th century as a as a jug. Ohio pottery. Yeah. I want it to look a little bit old. I've got a I've got a few little splits here, but I I like that. I'm going to think about this. I may end up putting a coat of tongue oil on top of that. So I'm going to let that dry really well, and we'll get back to it. All right, I've got about 80% of the finishing done on my jug. I've got several coats of lacquer, and then on top of the lacquer, I've got my, my Sam Maloof mixture. It's got varnish, boiled linseed oil, polyurethane, and mineral spirits. Okay, so it's uh, really an oil mixture, let's call it. <clears throat> All right, now what I've done here is I brought up my tail center for just a little bit of support. When I part that off, because of the diameter of that, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to, uh, to catch that. So I've got about a half an inch to go and wish me luck. Right. That was a good decision bringing that that tail center up held it right in place. So okay, no No disaster. There we go. Just want to make sure I'm not too thin on that on the bottom of that 
jug. It's a jug. All right, well, little, okay, little jug band music or rhythm and blues. It ain't a jug unless it sings. I like it. Now on to the next uh, step in this operation. I'm going to make a little plug for this, a lid or a plug, and uh, yeah, and it'll be complete. Very good. Alright, this is a, a jug, so I need a plug. Get that in the ballpark with my skew chisel. Now I want this plug to have um, just a barely a, a slip fit on that. And that's really pretty good right there. Can always loosen that up a little bit later. Maybe a little bit long anyway. So I'm going to do a little bit more shaping on this while it's in this position. Then I'm going to reverse chuck it and finish it up and do some sanding on it. Alright, I've just taken a couple tools and finished off the bottom of my, my plug. And I'm going to bring up my tail center for support. And what I have is um, screwed into my live center a block of wood. It's got a nut embedded in some epoxy there. That won't mar up the bottom of my plug. And I can work on the top of this. Well, I'll tell you what, not to make a commercial, but you know as well as I do that Robust has absolutely the best tool rests on the market. This one is a three inch tool rest that is just going to fit perfectly in this spot. You can get, get that right in there. All right, now what I've done is I've defined the, the very top of my, my plug. It may not be that big, um, but I just need some place to aim for. So I'm going to go back to my skew chisel. It's going to be a pretty, pretty simple form. I'm turning about 1800 revolutions. Alright, I'm going to test the, the fit here. Okay, now, I think you can, you can tell this is way, way too long. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm going to find a pencil and mark this. You know, we could do the whole Fibonacci thing, but it all comes down to uh, the appearance. How does it look? Well, I think some something less than that line. And as far as the shape, I think I'm very close with the shape here. So, a little bit more shaping. 
I like the fit. It's a little bit of a snug slip fit. I'm going to go back to my, my parting tool. Redefine my, my length here. Now I've got my finger underneath the tool rest here and with my thumb I'm pressing that um, skew chisel into the tool rest so it doesn't skate. This is a pretty simple planing cut. Well, and I still think it's too long. And I also think that this wood does not work well with this wood here. So I think what I'm going to do is ebonize this, just make it black, and that can pick up some of the, the very dark features of this uh, wood here, this cotton wood. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ebonize my jug plug and what I'm going to use is a solution of vinegar and anything that will rust. All right, and if you do this, make sure you punch some holes in the lid of your jar. This stuff will expand and maybe, I don't think it'll explode exactly, but probably make a big mess in your shop. Okay, I got some steel wool and I'm not sure what else in there. Uh, like I said, anything that will rust. Well, let's just take a look here. Now what I'd like to do is, is leave this area. Um, oh, I got an idea. All right. This, this will work right here. Got a little little bit of painter's tape. So I'm going to protect the lower end of my plug from this solution. Okay, now this this solution I have in here really works well with something like oak. Does pretty good with other woods like cherry. Uh, and what happens is this solution reacts to the tannic acid in wood. And this works really well with a lot of woods. Just try it. And you can almost see, I even hit this up here and it just turned, turned pretty dark. So I'll let that sit for a few minutes. And if I want it darker, I'll just put another application on there. And in the end, if it isn't enough, if it isn't dark enough, I will simply use some black leather dye. But I think that's going to be really pretty, pretty good. All right, now I've got my piece of Mopani. This is the plug um, that's going to be the cap for my jug. And you can see right here, this is the natural wood, and this is where I ebonized that wood. So I'm going to just uh, clean up the, the top of this with skew chisel. And then I'll ebonize the top of this to match the sides. Alright, now just a little bit of sanding and I'll be done with that. And I'm really trying to keep this project very simple. I want it to look like it came out of the 19th century.
All right, now I'm going to put another application of my my ebonizing solution on the top of my plug. Just put a little bit on there and after 20 seconds it's going to react and turn dark. Yeah. So I'll cover the rest of this and I'll probably put a couple applications on there just to make it as dark as I can. And I am about ready to finish this project and I can show you the plug on top of the jug. It'll be completed.